financial analysts use various quantitative techniques to determine financial worth of a project in terms of its liquidity and solvency both uh, discounted cash flow based models and undiscounted cash flow based models are used in this process generally undiscounted cash flow models are used to determine solvency of the project whereas the discounted cash flow models are used to determine the project's profitability in this list the first model is the payback period payback period tells us the time that it that is required to recover back the project investment this model is based on cash flows and the model is very much easy to understand and use in determining the payback time period this payback time payback model is the indicator of a project liquidity it has a certain criteria to accept and reject the uh, the, pro the proposal of a project if the calculated payback period is less than the required payback period then the project can be accepted whereas if the a computed payback period is greater than the required payback period the project may not be accepted what if we have equal cash inflows like in the form of an annuity then how can we determine the payback period let assume we have a cash investment of 60000 rupees and annual cash inflow of 15000 rupees then the payback period can simply be computed by dividing the investment over the annual inflows so dividing rupees 60000 over rupees 15000 the answer comes to 4 this means that the payback period on this project is the period of 4 years but what if we have uneven cash inflows then how payback period can be determined let us assume we have an initial investment on a machine of rupees 6000 and for a period of 5 years we have uneven cash flows like 3000 1000 2500 1000 and 500 rupees in the last year then how can we determine payback period on this project we need to determine cumulative cash inflows these cumulative cash inflows when equal to the initial cash outflow that will be the project's payback period let go for it in the first year we have annual cash inflow of 3000 but we need a recovery of 6000 so we have to enter into the second year but in the second year the cash inflow is rupees 1000 now we have after 2 years accumulative cash flows of 4000 we need more an amount of rupees 2000 to have a recovery of 6000 in full but in the year 3 the cash inflows are 2500 so we are not required to work for the whole year we ha have to work in during the fraction of the year to determine that fraction we divide the required amount of rupees 2000 over the annual cash inflow of 2500 the resulting figure is 0.8 now we add this 0.8 to the initial 2 years the resulting figure is 2.8 years so this means that we need 2.8 years on this project to recover its initial cash investment of rupees 6000 there are certain drawbacks associated with this simplest technique the first is that the payback period measures the profit uh, measures the liquidity of the project and not the profitability then it ignores three important factors it ignores time value of money project risk factor and cash flows beyond the payback period in the recent example we have seen that we just needed rupees 2000 to break even our investment of rupees 6000 whereas in the third year the cash flows are 2000 at 500 but the payback method considers only 
फर्स्ट टू थाउजेंड रुपीज इन द एटी परसेंट पीरियड ऑफ द थर्ड ईयर फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ द पीरियड देर इज एन अर्निंग ऑफ फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज बट द पे बैक पीरियड डिड नॉट कंसिडर दैट एक्स्ट्रा अमाउंट देन दिस दिस मैथड इज अनएबल टू डिस्टिंग्विश बिटवीन प्रॉफिटेबल एंड अनप्रॉफिटेबल इन्वेस्टमेंट बिकॉज दिस पे बैक पीरियड मैथड does not consider profitability uh, like net present value and irr uh, there is no economic criteria uh, embedded in this technique so it has no economic rule to determine the acceptance and rejection of any given project then uh, it is recommended that besides assessing the liquidity of a project through pay back period the profitability of the project should also be measured and determined and accessed through other techniques like irr and npv to avoid the drawbacks of pay back period there is a refined version of it and that is the discounted pay back period it works in similar mode like the pay back period with a little difference that instead of uh, using gross cash inflows it uses present value of these cash inflows the decision criteria is same as the decision criteria with the payback period that is if the payback period computed is lesser than the required payback period we can accept the project otherwise not the determination of payback period where the cash inflows are even like an not the process is the same we determine present value of not and divide the initial cash outflow over the present value of cash inflows the resulting figure is the payback period but if we have uneven cash inflows during the life of the project then how we can determine the payback period the process is again same as the process we considered in the payback period but the difference is that we now require to determine present value of individual cash inflows throughout the life of the period and the cumulative cash flows of present values will determine the payback period let take the example we carry from the previous we have rupees 6000 as initial investment and we have the same cash inflows each year then if we determine the present value of individual cash inflows we see that till year 2000 x 6 this means that at the end of 3 years we have cumulative cash flows of 5491 now we require rupees 509 more in order to break even our initial investment of rupees 6000 but in year 4 the cash inflows are discounted at 0.823 and the present value is 823 so we divide 509 over 823 the resulting figure is 0.62 or 62 this means that we require 3.62 years in order to break even on this project given the cash flows are used as discounted cash flows to determine the payback period but this discounted payback period is not free from certain drawbacks an important drawback is that if there is a negative npv then no discounted payback period can be determined because the recovery of initial investment will not be possible then like discounted pay uh, like uh, payback period this discounted payback period also ignores the cash flows occur beyond the payback period again it is not a good measure of profitability as it considers only the solvency aspect and not the profitability then there may be a project that may yield do a negative npv but during the life of the project some 
पॉजिटिव कैश फ्लोज में आल्सो बी देयर बट दिस डिस्काउंटेड पे बैक पीरियड डज नॉट कंसिडर ऑल ऑफ देम देन वी हैव एवरेज अकाउंटिंग रिटर्न इन एवरेज अकाउंटिंग रिटर्न द मॉडल इज वेरी इजी टू डिटर्मन द profitability rate of the capital project it is based on accounting number and not on the cash flow data like payback period it also ignores the time value of money and the project risk as we know that there is a cut off rate in npv and irr but for average accounting rate of return there is no such cut off rate therefore this method is unable to distinguish between profitable investment and an unprofitable investment as we have seen in the case of payback period to determine average accounting rate of return we simply divide average in initial investment average we divide average net income of a certain period of time over the average book value of the capital project on the screen you can see there is an investment cost of 100000 dollars and we have 5 years income data in the last column we have net income of each year if we average the net income of 5 years the figure is 18000 dollars if we divide this 18000 dollars net income over the average book value of 100000 dollars the resulting return is the 18% 